<clears throat> Hi everybody, I'm using my usual size 6 silver black and I have a backup 3 over 0 Raphael uh, Petit Gris. Oh, did you see that? There it is. Okay, and for those who don't know me, thank you for coming and watching. I like painting watercolor florals and why because they please me <laughs> and hopefully by watching you know you just enjoy um, less than an hour's worth of visual creativity and you relax because of of what you see um, people say when you watch people paint, it's mesmerizing. So let's assume that's what you feel also when you watch me paint. Can always turn the paper around especially if you're not well versed in changing the angle of your brush there is no shame in doing so okay what I'm trying to achieve lately is pretty much what I've been trying to achieve in all this time. So I've been painting since 2016 on and off. Um, more like 2017. I just got a painting set because I was doing or I was introduced to brush pen calligraphy. So that's another healthy me time outlet that I have. All right. And um, I didn't know what I would do with that big set of watercolor. So somehow, somewhere, I just started playing. And I thought that was so good, you know, I kept posting pictures and, and even some videos. But looking back, ew. <laughs> but there's something to be said by persistence and determination and the idea that you think you're so good at it makes you just want to get better and better. So... Here I am, posting what I can. And um, so what we should be doing right now is lessening the paint on the brush as we uh, go farther and farther from the center because you want a darkened center and a very light um, perimeter I guess you can call and then the, we can work on um, threes meaning things look better when when they're they they are painted uh, odd odd numbers I want to make another row somewhere here since I have so much dark paint on on loaded on the brush but I have to work fast so I can return to the to the other one before it dries because I want to drag paint around and 
And since I said odd numbers, now I have to make five. <laughs> Because 4, if you will look, tends to want some sort of symmetry. It, it demands that symmetry somehow. Okay, so I go make a fifth, a fifth flower. See? It so then looks looks like us and them. So I'll just add, or maybe I'll add the fifth one later. Um, maybe I will do a study in blue since I've got four roses that are blue. So I'll look for all my blues from my paints and I will work with those. We don't know what that is, but hey, that's not the point of my expression. <laughs> we just keep going and, and enjoy the painting, the painting process, not the product, which by the way, is how kids view art. We are so um, focused on the result we forget that they enjoy just painting just mixing colors and being and being uh you know out of the ordinary doing things that are out of the ordinary i say this because i'm a preschool teacher and i would appreciate you guys in you know in this time of pandemic to just do a little art activities with them and praise them for their efforts not for their not not anti praises like ooh good job what what exactly is the good job right so now um if i'm going to work with all blue we have to come up with some sort of contrast so there will be dark ones there will be very transparent and light ones i can even add the same blue at the center just to darken it remember the rule the center is always um in shadows because it's usually hiding and um most most uh how do you say it the one that's away from the light source so these i i would like to call our ribbon um ribbon petals so i just make a u-turn so they are loopy and i leave slivers of light so to suggest that you know light hits it somehow somewhere or that the flower is very lively it moves about in the wind or because the sunshine angle changes often see that it's nothing major but it gets the it gets the eye questioning and, and looking out and checking to see what we have. 
I'll just keep going round and round. I try to avoid the wet spots because your palm and your hand, see that? You get paint all over the place if you stick to one area. And we try not to. We try not to uh, destroy the painting. <laughs> so if you're working with one brush, as you see that I am, try to make the most out of the different angles that you can use the brush with. Okay, so sometimes I use the tip, sometimes I use the broad side. Here I go, I'll use the, the side again. Side, and then I just go fix it. Um, in the beginning, you'll probably think there's nothing left. There's no way to get this painting to look any better or to improve this painting or to save this painting. But I tell you now, it is possible. Just keep your mind open, keep your eyes open. Um, where can I go? Here. Oh, that's dark. Which is okay. Because we're working on a surface that was painted very lightly. Okay. Nothing wrong with turning your paper. And getting the angle that you need. Um, but for those who paint using an easel, good luck. <laughs> Was that mean? I don't know. But um, so there's something to be said about just freestyling it. I never have an idea of what will end up. So I guess I'm a what they call an intuitive painter. Um, you just go with the flow. Something that I've been trying to um, achieve or reach in terms of patience. It's hard, um, and if you've watched other videos of mine, it's hard not to go philosophical when you're painting because the techniques that are used are repetitive. As you can see, I'm still doing the, the broad strokes and the th thin strokes or the pointy-ended uh, petal, petals. But you start thinking, and that's the meditative um, byproduct of painting. You start thinking about what you're doing, why you're doing stuff. And this painting has gotten me um, calmer and I'm now thinking more, which is a good thing. I'm evolving as a human being. <laughs> and thinkers are planners and are more careful about life because you weigh the pros and cons. It's not that I want you to um, be boring. It's just that I find you more interesting when you're when you're thinking. There you are. So for as long as the painting underneath is dry, you may glaze or you can paint on top of something else. Okay. I will go for a, an aquamarine. There's a hint of green in this one. And I'll keep doing the same flowers. around so I don't yeah, let's put one here I 
and I'm going to borrow some paint from this one carefully I'm rotating and then I'll deposit it down here let's keep the paint in the center shall we there we are and I'll keep turning the page flowers here so um, the paper I'm using is just a 190 GSM it's student grade I bought a lot because I do workshops online and well I used to do them um, on site and I even had, I even had Airbnb experiences, but with the pandemic, things stopped, so I have so much paper. <laughs> and you work with what you have, right? And so, not that I'm finishing off the paper, but since I have a lot of it, and it's practice grade, I'm using it. Um, and you have to practice guys you can't keep the paper there by the way paper ha paper like these have shelf lives and so you might as well use them um, how, how do you know they're not good they start repelling water or when they um, accept water they don't accept the water or your paint strokes evenly and you wouldn't want to know that while you're painting um, and when they do not accept your paint strokes evenly it's not the whole paper you know this part could be good and next thing you know the next part screws you up <laughs> for a lack of a better word Okay. There we are. And maybe I will introduce a darker color in the wet spots. Makes it more interesting. So I'll just keep turning the paper around and working in areas that I know our dry. Ooh, how pretty. Two toned. So sometimes you have surprise strokes like those. And you not live with it, you work with it, you celebrate it. Mm -hmm. okay and I just cheated I added a little violet to this one oh but you can't see it um, and It's okay if it this one is lightest because I'm encroaching on the other flower anyways there we go and I'll just keep turning and working with different sections the purple and 
and I will make a really super light floral a, a rose here that's a little purple because as I said I can't live with just four <laughs> in the center with purple. How's that? Oh, that's pretty. So now I have to balance the purple everywhere else since I've introduced purple already. But I'm not going to go all out. Just very sub subtle, very light and where do i put it how about here can you see that okay. there's one There's two, maybe here, an open full, almost. Can you see it? I think I have to turn the paper around, excuse me. This one. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought this was going to be light. Surprise. Then I will just add the same tint. And just drop them in the wet spots and their job is to spread okay that's what liquids do they find other liquids there we are so we keep going and where do i go I'll just add here. Now let me just turn the paper around first. And work here. Ooh. Rainbow purple. Loving the rainbow purple.
you something here. So we are varying the shapes and sizes as well. Remember if they're all big, then you can't see or feel how dainty they are. You need to have um, variety. Okay. Maybe a tiny one here. So the painting is getting somewhere. You just need to add a little bit more variety since it's a purple and blue painting as it turns out. Just need to put lots of them around. And we go around again, trying not to wet our palms with, with flowers that are uh, still drying. I'm just adding water to the last batch and hopefully this is much not as I expected but okay let's work let's work with this it's watery but not um light blue as I wanted it to as I expected it to be so I just work that way embrace it okay and keep going Just adding water. Hopefully this is the mm, still not what I expected, but it's light enough to show contrast with the neighboring petals, so we're good. Should I stop? You say yes or no. Because if I stop, then I start adding leaves. Why oh, I can't help myself, I don't know. I'm adding a, a rose to this section, but a really light one. So I'm taking away as much paint as I can from my paintbrush. And 
and I'm just using uh, the remaining water and paint on the paintbrush. Force the center. And I will leave it. Hopefully. No, I don't want to leave it. I want to brush this away. And brush that away. So I'm taking away, I'm lifting color from that section. And there, almost non-existent. I'm going to Petals super light. I'll just make them borrow from a neighboring flower. I'll borrow color and transfer. Okay, so just water. borrowing should be a little you know wet still if not there's no way you can pull color from it So when you're a painter, part of your job is to edit your work. Do you feel that it, you should stop adding? Do you think you can get away with a few more petals? Some paintings are ruined by bad judgments like those. As I said, I like the um the process more than the product so I, if i could just go on and on i would but that doesn't make the painting pretty does it so i'm just dropping paint where it's still wet I 
And then with this, we start adding leaves. When we add leaves, we can take from all of these um, palettes that I've never erased or um, cleaned because these colors are usable. And these are one of a kind tones and shades. So we never um, clean palettes. Well, okay, not we, just me and some of my mentors we find use for these and so we keep them on and putting petals help um, define the edges of very light florals You can vary your petal colors too. So darker shades uh, may, may suggest that, you know, this petal or this flower is in the shade because it's darker or that it's a different species altogether. That's not um, uncommon to think. And again, variety is welcome. When you watch me paint, is it for the relaxation of it all or do you plan to paint as well? Oops, I have to turn this. <clears throat> My elbow is getting the paint. Just go round and round. Um, we work with lightest colors first. At least while I'm putting leaves here. And then we darken as we go. And with that in mind, um, well, that's really the one of the tenets in watercolor. You work with the lightest first. And then you get darker and darker. That way you can glaze or you can paint over dried sections with another color without mixing anything together. And 
then you can um, play with the contrast since there's light and then there's there is shade Okay, so all of my roses are petaled now. <laughs> I can start working on the tinier leaves. In the past two paintings that I did, I managed to stick with certain petal shapes. And um, to come up maybe even subconsciously with the with a more coherent um, a more coherent painting so I'm using a dark dark teal if you if you will so it has a greenish um, tone that um, may suggest leaves and I'm laying down the paintbrush to create that round shape at the, at the end of the leaf so I don't have to form the shape manually like this it will just um, create it on its own so that's pretty much painting 101 when you want to do leaves okay and when I do leaves it is for the purpose of finding that um, symmetry oopsies symmetry or balance to make that wreath a little bit uh, more how do you say elliptical since this is not a circle at least the oblong on the left is the same as the oblong on the right okay we keep going I'll even put one from here and I'll make it really dark because this is light it becomes a little bit more um, stark and seen there you are I'll keep going And with just one loading of the paintbrush, I can fit in so many leaves, and that's a good thing.
same color just watered down so I'm going around the paper so as not to dirty my palm I skip sections so that I allow the paint to dry first
I'm adding leaves here and there, but I'm not adding paint anymore. It's all uh, whatever's left on my brush plus water. Since I have a lot of dark leaves all around already. I'm just adding texture to different spots. that are empty Okay, I think that's enough of the leaves. I'm going to work with the centers of the flowers and I will work with black. And I'm mixing it with the, the leaf green that I just used to, to somehow soften the black. And now I will work with flower centers. And I work in a in a method of, I know, um, method of, methodical, there you are, methodical. Um, direction otherwise I will miss one or two flowers and that's not fun okay we need fat strokes thin strokes pointy strokes Today's painting.